So far we have considered two types of convergence of Fourier series. First one was uniform convergence, that is, uh, for example, if f is continuously differentiable, then the partial Fourier sum converges to the function f uniformly. And also, if f is uh, square integrable, then uh, the partial Fourier sum converges to f in the L2 norm. And these two types of convergence are concerned with, uh, are concerned with uh, global property of convergence. Okay, so it does not, they do not depend on specific values of the point at which uh, the Fourier series converges. Okay, so now we turn our attention to uh, pointwise conver convergence. So given a point in the interval of uh, some period, uh, does the Fourier series converge, converge to uh, the func function value at that point? Convergence. Uh, regarding this, uh, there is a theorem by uh, Dubois Raymond. that says if f is a periodic continuous function to pi then uh, uh, the Fourier series of this at specific point uh, I should write parenthesis here uh, so at some point a given point x this may not converge. So that means uh, continuity and periodicity of a function is not sufficient to guarantee the conver point-wise convergence of uh, the Fourier series of a function. Now to study this let us uh, introduce the notion of po uh, piecewise continuous and smooth. So it's a definition. We say a function of uh, period 2 pi is uh, piecewise piecewise continuous and smooth. So, so by definition, if there exist uh, finitely many points, uh, gamma 1, gamma 2, and so on, up to, say, gamma L, so finite, finitely many points, uh, in in the interval uh, from negative pi to pi, okay, including negative pi, not including pi, uh, such that uh, such that f and f prime are continuous. And bounded. in each interval uh, between gamma i and gamma i plus 1 and also uh, gamma l minus 2 pi and gamma 1. Okay. So if we have an interval uh, between pi, negative pi and pi, so there are uh, uh, finitely many points, gamma 1, gamma 2, uh, gamma, uh, gamma L. So, let's see, in, 
in each of these uh, sub-intervals. And uh, gamma L minus 2 pi is somewhere here. So in these intervals, they are uh, continuous and bounded. Uh, the function the function f is continuous and bounded. Then we say that uh, uh, not only that function, but it's al also its derivative. Then we say uh, that function is piecewise continuous and smooth. And if f is piecewise continuous and smooth, piecewise uh, continuous and smooth. Then uh, the limits uh, x to gamma i minus 0, which we often write as gamma i minus 0, and also limit, uh, this is left limit, and the right limit, they all exist. Gamma i plus 0. So these exist. And to show this, it's, uh, it's quite easy. So if we consider f uh, x1, f of x2, and this is, so since uh, this is, this function is piecewise continuous, and bounded. Uh, continuous, this can be expressed as uh, integral of the derivative. And this is, since f prime is bounded, uh, there is some constant, say m uh, j uh, minus 1. just integrate the constant so this is uh, x2 minus x1 uh, maybe we can write uh, absolute value here and this converges to uh, 0 as x1 and x2 goes to gamma j from the right or from the left. So therefore this converges to zero. Therefore uh, uh, these uh, limits exist. And in particular this function, uh, if the function is piecewise uh, continuous and smooth then it is uniformly continuous in each uh, sub-intervals of this between gamma i and gamma i plus 1. Now we can state our goal here. Uh, our goal is to prove uh, the following theorem. Uh, if f is piecewise, uh, piecewise continuous and smooth. Then uh, for each uh, x0 in, uh, in the interval, uh, the Fourier series of of f converges to uh, the following value f of x0 minus 0 plus so this is the left limit and x0 plus 0 so this is the right limit so the, the arithmetic average of the left limit and the right limit 
So the Fourier series converges to this value, not exactly the value of uh, f of x0. This may not be defined, okay? but to, to this average value. So if the function f is continuous at x0, then the Fourier series converges to f of uh, x0. And if it's not continuous at this point, then it converges to this value, the average of the left and the right limit. So if we define a new function, f tilde of x by uh, this, so f of x, if uh, x uh, continuous if f, f is continuous at x if otherwise it's not continuous at x then we define uh, f tilde of x as the average otherwise Then uh, the Fourier series of uh, F tilde of X converges to uh, F tilde at each X. Now let us give a lemma that is used for proving the pointwise co uh, point convergence of Fourier series. Uh, this lemma is called uh, Riemann, uh, the Riemann Lubeg, Riemann Lubeg lemma. Okay, so this says let g of x be a function on an interval between a and b, open interval, uh, continuous, continuous, except for finitely many uh, points. And integrable. Integrable. On the interval i. So this means uh, the integral from a to b of the absolute value of g of x. This is finite. Then uh, we have uh, a b exponential of i lambda x times g of x. Uh, this converges to zero as uh, the absolute value of lambda goes to infinity. Okay, we will skip the proof of this lemma because it's a little bit too technical. But anyway, so here it is. And then we move on to the theorem. Okay, now let's prove the main theorem here. What we really want to show is this. So if we have a function f, and its uh, Fourier uh, partial sum, uh, this value converges to uh, the arithmetic mean of uh, this. Okay, so we want to show this convergence at each point x0. Uh, whether or not uh, x0 is a continuous point of f. Okay. Now, let's prove this. Uh, using the 
uh, Dirichlet kernel, we can express this as uh, the following integral. So since we are assuming that this function f is periodic with period of 2 pi, we can shift the uh, range of integration from negative pi to uh, so so the range of integral can be shift from here to uh, this okay so we can integrate this and the directly kernel uh, let's see it's uh, it's an even function so we can put y here and f of y and dy and this is equal to uh, negative pi to pi so and we can shift this back to uh, this interval uh, let's see why uh, by change of variables we have uh, x0 plus y here uh, we change the variables from y to uh, x0 plus y Okay, so y minus x0 becomes y, and y becomes x0 plus y. And we split this integral into two parts. Uh, that is negative pi to 0. And 0 to positive pi. And since uh, dy uh, is an even function, so we change the variables from uh, from y to negative y in, in this part, then this becomes uh, 0 to pi and dn y and f of x0 uh, plus y and x0 minus y okay and remember d and y is equal to d n minus y. Okay, now uh, we also know that the directly uh, function kernel is uh, normalized. So this integral d n y is one half of this. And this is one half because this part is one. So therefore, it is sufficient if we show the following. So j one, if we define j one by uh, the first term, d and y f x zero plus y minus f of uh, x0 plus y. So this is the right limit if this converges to 0. And, and the next term x0 minus y and the left limit If both of j1 and j2 converges, converge to 0, then we can show uh, that uh, this 
uh, convergence holds. Okay. And by assumption, uh, if the function f is uh, piecewise continuous and smooth, And so, therefore, uh, therefore, there exists some delta that is positive, such that uh, f prime of x is uh, continuous, and bounded. for all x that is in between x0 and x0 plus delta. Okay, so let's define m delta by the supremum of the absolute value of f prime where x moves in this range in this interval and also uh, g of y as f of x0 plus y minus f of x0 plus 0 so, so remember this is the right limit of f of uh, x at x0 okay then, for all uh, y in uh, between 0 and delta, we have g of y is equal to oh, wait a minute, integral and f f of let's see x zero plus t and dt ah this is prime okay so this is just a, a fundamental theorem of calculus and this is less than or equal to the integral of the absolute value of that function inside. And using this, m delta, this is m delta, this is m delta times y. So we have, uh, let's see. Zero and delta uh, g of y <coughs> and sine y over two dy uh, m delta uh, using this. This is finite. And uh, for y between delta and pi, we have sine y over 2 greater than or equal to sine delta over 2, which is positive okay because uh, y is less than pi half um, I mean y half is less than pi half so it is positive so therefore the integral from delta to pi of g of 
y divided by sine y over 2 dy is less than or equal to uh, so using this uh, this is uh, sine delta over 2 and delta pi uh, g of y and this is finite okay so this means so we have seen so uh, this function g of y divided by sine y half uh, this is integrable between 0 and pi okay therefore g of y divided by sine y over 2 is integrable on uh, between 0 and pi okay now now we use the Riemann Lubig lemma So according to the Riemann Lubeck lemma, uh, we have the following. And this one. Exponential of I lambda. Uh, let's see. In this case, we use y. And this function. This converges to 0 as lambda goes to infinity right but uh, if we expand this by using Euler's formula this is cosine lambda y i sine lambda y so if uh, lambda goes to infinity and then this converges to zero that means uh, this cosine times this function and sine times this function they both converges to zero both converge to zero. So let's put lambda equal to uh, n plus one half. Uh, yeah, one half. Then when n goes to uh, this lambda goes to infinity when n goes to infinity, right? So let's take only the the imaginary part of this uh, uh, left hand side. So that becomes this and sine n plus one half y times g of y sine y over two dy. So this converges to zero. But uh, this part is the Dirichlet kernel and this g y is uh, g y is this so that means this means j1 converges to 0 as n goes to infinity okay similarly we can show that j2 converges to 0 as n goes to infinity. Therefore, uh, we are done.